Okay, so here's what I wanted to uh, to load. Uh, these are some notes that I've written, um, and I'll post the link for these onto Canvas. Um, and uh, this is basically what we're going to be working through for quite um, uh, quite some time. Okay, so um, I need to put some more stuff in here about the circuit level things, but uh, let's go to um, our instructions. So here are the 12 instructions that we have to work with on this sort of made up processor. Um, we have uh, the ability to move data from one place to another. Okay, so we can move data from the CPU's registers to memory, or from memory back to the registers, or from a register to another register. We'd want to be able to do addition, um, and we'd want to be able to do the logical operations like AND, XOR, OR, those kind of guys. Um, and then there's a couple of special operations that we'll talk about later. Uh, one of them is rotation, so that's bit shifting. Uh, we used that when we were doing the um, uh, like addition with floating point, and you'd have to denormalize numbers and stuff like that. Um, and then a jump command, this is basically, this is what makes a computer a computer, is being able to uh, jump from one place in memory to another, based on whether or not something is true. Um, okay, so let's just sort of look at the different op or the different operations we have. Um, we have load, and there are two different kinds of load operations. So the first kind of load operation is going to take a thing that's in memory and put it into a register. The second uh, load operation takes a specific number that you've chosen and puts it into a register, okay? So the difference here is um, the dollar sign versus the pound sign. Um, so I should say, by the way, that uh, the machine code that, that uh, for this particular uh, language is defined by the book. So the machine code is the stuff under the opcode column. The rest of it I made up. Um, so um, I made it up in order to look, well, basically as close as possible to real machine code from processors of the 1970s and 80s. Um, and I'll, I'll show you actually uh, in a bit, uh, or maybe next time, kind of the processor that inspired a lot of this. Um, okay, so two different load operations, and it's, uh, as we were discussing a moment ago, are you loading from a specific memory cell. So that would be like me giving you the instruction, load your hand with the contents of mailbox number seven. You would go and whatever was in mailbox number seven, you'd take it out and that's now in your hand. Whereas this command, the second one, uh, would load a specific letter into your hand. So I could say, um, you know, load your hand with uh, uh, your census paperwork or something. Um, okay, I can take things from a register and put them back out into memory. Um, and because I'm going to a memory address, basically I tried to keep this sort of standardized. And anytime you were going, um, anytime you were talking about a specific number, you put a pound sign in front of it. And any time you're talking about a memory address, you put a dollar sign in front of it. Okay. Um, so you can move one register to another. And it's called move, but really it's copy because uh, the difference between moving and copying is when you move something, you delete the original. When you copy it, you the original stays put. Um, and the, it's really copy here. Um, you have two different kinds of addition. You can add things as integers, or you can add things assuming that they're floats. Um, this, by the way, is why we did uh, the floating point and the integer stuff did everything in 8-bit, because this machine does everything in 8-bits. Okay, You've got logical and or a not, or sorry, uh, XOR. 
So those are these three here. You've got the rotate, which we'll talk about later, and the jump, which we'll, be, we'll definitely talk about later. Okay, so um, if I wanted to, so let me take this and put it here. Let me minimize that so we don't have the inception anymore. And I'm going to open up Adam, and I'm going to put him here. And then I'm going to make some more room. And I'm going to make a new file. And I'm going to save this, well, um, real quick. So let me go back to, um, actually, you know what, I can... Um, hang on one second. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this over here and this there. So this way I can have my C code and my assembly code in the same place. Uh, and then I'm going to scrunch it uh, a little bit so that I can have my little table over here. And let me kind of make some more room there. Okay, so um, for what I did when I showed you guys the assembly code um, here, or that came from this C code, is I ran a program the compiler that took in this C code and spit out the assembly. And that all happened basically in a split second. Um, there is no such program for this made up architecture, partly because I haven't written it yet. So basically what we will have to do is do this by hand, okay? Uh, and so you are basically the compiler and the assembler. Okay, so I'm going to do this line by line here. Um, int a equals 2, we need to load the number 2 into a register. Um, and let me save this real quick. Um, Okay, um, I'm going to load register 0 with the number 0, 2. Okay, then I'm going to load register 1 with the number 0, 3. And then I'm going to add as integers registers 0 and 1. And where am I going to put that answer? I'm going to put it in register 2. Okay, so the order here is very important. Um, the first thing that you list with the addition is where the answer is going to go. And then the second two things that you list are what two things are you adding together. Uh, so this 201 would have worked. I could have also done 210 because, of course, it doesn't matter what order you do addition in. Um, okay, and then... The print command, there's no real way to print um, on this machine because there is no screen or anything like that. And so instead of printing, um, what I did was I stored register 2 to the memory cell FF. And then the return 0 basically is a halt command. Um, so this chunk of C code, um, for the most part, line by line, each one of these commands translates into exactly one machine instruction. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, any questions on that part of it? And goodness, it's almost four o'clock. How time flies when you're having fun. Okay, so then the last step is basically to turn this into the machine code. Okay, in order to do that, let me um, let me hide the C code. Okay, 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over and I'm going to put semicolons. Semicolons um, are comments. And to the right of each instruction, I'm going to translate it into the machine code. So for that, we also go back to the uh, table. And here is the basically the legend for how you do it. So the opcode would be the actual machine instruction to uh, load a register with a specific number would be something of the form 2, something, something, something. The first number, uh, R, is which register, and XY is whatever memory address, or sorry, whatever number. So here, the opcode is 2 because we're loading a specific number. We're loading to register 0. What number? 0, 2. Then the next instruction, I'm loading register 1 with the bit pattern 03. Then I'm going to add. Then I'm going to store. And then I'm going to halt. Okay, and if you notice, these 10, uh, or sorry, these five instructions, uh, these 10 bytes, uh, were exactly what I had in my little simulator, which was here. Okay, so um, 02, 03, I added the numbers, I stored the result, and then I quit the program. Okay, so um, if you click the clear and run button, basically the program will run automatically and it will do its thing. Okay, if you hit step, it will just do one step at a time and wait for you to hit step again. Uh, so that can be useful to kind of get a sense for how each instruction works. All right, but if I run it again, basically just reading in instructions, decoding them, doing what they say to do, loading in the next instruction, and continuing uh, that process until we hit an instruction that tells us that we can stop. Um, okay, so back to the assembly. All right, so there's, just to recap here, the process of taking C code, or, or really high-level code, so something that, that is readable to a human, and translating this into these series of five commands, load, add, i, store, and so on, that is the process of compiling. Taking the, and, and that produces assembly code. So this is an assembly instruction, that's an assembly instruction, etc. The process of taking that assembly code and turning it into actual machine code is the process of assembling, okay? And um, in for real computers, this is all automated, okay? So for example, um, let me go back to my terminal window. All right, so um, I have here the assembly program that I wrote, okay? And I ran a program that took that and output the uh, assembly and then it output the executable that I ran and it spit out the number five okay so um, there is an automated process for doing this on real processors there is no such automated process for our made-up processor you guys are the compiler and you guys are the assembler um, and it gets a little nitty-gritty um, but um, the good news is, if you can write the assembly, then you can get the machine code, because each assembly instruction translates directly into a machine code instruction. Uh, so the reason that we have assembly is it's lower level than C code, but still is kind of human readable. It's not as human readable as, say, the C code over here, but it's a whole lot better than um, uh, than just literally looking at a bunch of the numbers over here 
uh, the actual machine code. Uh, now, as it will turn out, so uh, this will answer Mr. DeFrenza's question again, um, what you guys, I think, will find as we get into this is that you will uh, basically end up memorizing the opcodes uh, by osmosis um, because there's only 12 of them, right? And so while I'm not really going to ask you to memorize things, um, so like, for example, on the final, um, you guys will be able to use this sheet as a reference um, for the operations, so you don't have to memorize all of them. But I think what you'll notice is that as we go through it, you're going to end up basically memorizing them without trying. Um, okay, so um, that's kind of the overview as to where we're going to go from here. Um, and we'll talk about more details and um, uh, the nitty gritty of the stuff. Uh, and then we'll also talk about sort of how to start writing some simple programs. So, uh, for example, um, you maybe have noticed in here that in our 12 instructions, uh, does anybody see an instruction for doing subtraction? Bueller, anybody see a subtraction operation? There isn't one. But the good news is we can get the subtraction operation by using a combination of some of the instructions that we have. Okay, so um, this is why I taught you guys to do two's complement by flipping bits and adding one, because uh, it turns out that it'll be really easy to do that uh, with a couple of these instructions. So, all right, so we'll quit here. Um, so I'm sorry about... Um, um, the stream crashing, I'll get uh, the two different recordings uploaded to YouTube, and uh, I'll get a copy of these notes uh, onto Canvas for you guys, and I think that's it for today, so if you got any questions, uh, then hit me up on Discord.